All right, let's get this kicked off. Uh, we appreciate you signing up for our next installment of the Yada Know webinar series. Uh, I see uh, a few familiar names in the in the dossier there. I appreciate your return visits. Thank you for your loyalty, and we thank you for coming back to get the new content that we provide for you each month. This one's pretty specific uh, and uh, very important. It's a lot of chatter around this particular topic in the industry. We were asked when we would address it. And here we are, we're finally getting to it. It's one of the most requested topics that we have. Uh, today's topic is the solar leaf fights back against NEM3. My name is Ryan Davies. I'm the VP of sales. I'm your regular moderator here for this webinar series. And today we're lucky enough uh, to have Mitch Sargent present, presenting to us. He is the business development and sales manager. Uh, anything that touches the Pacific Ocean falls under Mitch's purview. And uh, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm lucky enough to work alongside of him, but he is easily one of uh, the most the foremost minds when it comes to this particular topic. He understands the intricacies of this uh, in a way that uh, few other people do. He's an incredible resource for us uh, internally, and we're excited to be making him available to you. Thank you, Ryan. Happy to be here. So at the end of the webinar, we will have a question and answer uh, portion. So if you have any questions during uh, this entire webinar series, please punch it into the chat. We will get to it at the end. Even if you don't have a question, hang around to the end because we will have our regular monthly Yada swag giveaway prize. Uh, the lovely people on our marketing team will select one individual at random and we will be reaching out to you to mail you a Yada swag giveaway prize, a number of different items um, that we'll be delivering directly towards you. So hang on to the end of the webinar for that announcement. Today's agenda. I'll just breeze through this pretty quickly. You're going to learn a little bit about Yada. What is NEM3? Um, how do you model the Solar Leaf, which is our, our core uh, product and um, system offering here? Uh, a number of case studies. You can see them in, in real life scenarios. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time on the spec sheets, um, different partnership services, and then we'll get into a, a brief review followed by the questions. Who is Yada? We are energy made simple. Yada is leading the transition to clean renewable energy by making energy simple. We were founded in March 2017. Uh, we are headquartered in Austin, Texas, where there are a good number, about 35 of us uh, at any given time. If you're ever in the area, please stop by and check out the office. It's a nice place to show off. Um, our engineering team is there. You can see them hard at work at the newest innovations uh, for the company. Um, we have a number of different awards and recognitions. Um, you can see these here. If you need any more information on them, head on over to our website or ask your local RSM. Again, the company motto, energy made simple. We are simplified storage. We have a complete range of distributed solar energy technologies for the commercial and industrial market. That's one of the areas where we really stand out. We specifically only handle the CNI market. Our technologies were made with the goal to convert commercial buildings into solar power plants. And from there, I'm gonna hand things over to my good friend and colleague, Mr. Mitch Sargent, and I will be uh, joining in from time to time throughout the duration of the webinar and then hosting the Q&A portion. So uh, take it away, Mitch. Thanks, Ryan. All right. So before we get in here, just going to take a quick moment to review our architecture for our products. Uh, I think that's an important distinction versus what is currently on the market, and it will help you sort of visualize and understand how to, uh, you know, how to deploy this type of, of architecture. So it is a PV coupled battery. So we have the solar module which the DC out goes directly to the battery that saves on conversion losses. You don't have to convert it to AC, then back to DC. Uh, so the DC goes straight into the battery, charges the battery, and then uh, the battery either discharges or there's just a, a pass-through option to go into the microinverter. And this is a native three-phase commercial-only product uh, in either 208 or 480, uh, some other uh, three phase options as well there, um, and then down to your your MSP. <clears throat> Diving in a little bit further, again, this is recap. We've done kind of uh, we've done other webinars in the past. 
solely focused on the microinverter or solely for focused on the solar leaf. So this is just a, a quick recap. We chose to couple with a microinverter uh, because safety is one of our most important features. Uh, from the ground up, the solar leaf was designed to be the safest battery on the market. And, and we can talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. But uh, microinverters allow you to deploy the safest system. They're low voltage. There's no fire risk. There's no chance of arcing. Uh, they have higher production versus string inverters. You get down to the panel visibility. They're rapid shutdown compliant and much easier to troubleshoot. So for all these reasons, it makes sense when you're deploying the safest and easiest battery system, why the inverter system shouldn't follow that uh, as well. The battery system is sitting in the ballast tray. So we actually engineer the design of the weight uh, of, of the system into the, the racking. So we will remove the ballast blocks. This is panel claw FR10 racking. We remove the ballast blocks, insert the battery, which weighs 56 pounds, and uh, the goal here is to have a net weight of zero uh, addition to the system. In certain instances where you need one battery under each panel, uh, you're only looking at an increased weight of about 4.6 to 4.8 pounds per square foot. So even as you max out the system, you're not adding that much weight per, uh, per square foot. So structurally, you, you don't jeopardize the integrity of the roof. So um, we, we are all good there. This solves the age-old question of where do we put it? So time and time again, when I'm dealing with new EPCs, installers, developers, or whatnot, uh, they go through a tough time when sizing energy storage because uh, they, they, there's a lot of effort. Each, each project is completely different than the last. So um, when, you're, when you're trying to size the system, you have to do quite a lot of legwork just to get a quote to that end customer. And what we've found in the market is only 8% of all CNI projects actually move forward with energy storage attached. So we're quoting it a lot and not deploying it a lot. Um, and so that was one of the issues that we wanted to solve when we uh, created this product. So we made it modular so you can size it. It's a one kilowatt hour battery. You can size it to exactly the size you need. So if you need 200 kilowatt hours, you got it. If you need 189 you got it. Uh, if you need a thousand, you got it. You can do whatever you want. Your only limitation is number of panels. Um, so especially what we'll see today when we're exploring California in particular, what we always see is it quickens the payback time and increases the overall savings uh, for the project when compared to PV only. So it's a huge okay. impact for the customer. Yeah. And I think you're going to demonstrate later on, right, Mitch, with a with a, a real-time case study that it's a bit faster payback than some people even anticipate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I littered this presentation with a bunch of case studies and real-world examples and different types of buildings. So uh, we're going to see some cool stuff and in all the major three utilities across the state. So let's talk about NEM, net metering. Um, some of you that have joined that you might be new to the, new to the industry or New to the market, not sure what's what NEM is about. So let's just kind of do a quick refresher. Net metering is just tracking the production of the storage on the rooftop or carport or wherever it is. And you know how much is used on site versus how much is given back to the grid. And then depending on what net metering laws are in your area, you're gonna get a certain amount of credit for that exported gener gener generation to the grid. Um, and in California, under NEM 2.0, this person is enjoying all the money that they've been receiving from their uh, overproducing solar array because they were given full retail credit for anything that was exported. So one kilowatt hour that they overproduced or didn't consume in that exact moment that they needed it um, was given back to the grid and they were given a credit for one quote unquote free kilowatt hour when they needed it. So at nighttime or you know when the sun goes down a little bit or early in the morning when they needed uh, additional power, they'd pull that back out. It was like the utility company was banking for them. Um, so it was easy to make a 100% offset system work financially for customers. That all changed earlier this year with NEM 3.0. So NEM 3.0, look at all these really sad, what would have been solar customers. And now you're like, oh man, how do I, how do I get it? Well, batteries are the answer and we're going to, we're going to show you why. But 
the value of the exported credits was reduced 20 to 40 percent and sometimes even more. Um, so a, a huge, a huge blow to the solar industry. Um, and, and that's why, you know, now it's not just the solar industry, but it's going to be solar and energy storage uh, industry. And, and let's look at the, the heat map. So this is a, a demonstration of what they did with NEM3. This is actually shows all the months of the year and different times of day, what the export rate is. And you can see some, <laughs> some of this in the red boxes, you're getting almost nothing. You know, I mean, a, a fraction of a penny uh, here during these, these times of, of the year and time of day. So, and this is coincident with your solar production. So anything that you're not using instantaneously just goes away um, and, and kind of thrown away. But you also have some of these instances where like September, they're gonna give you a bunch of money for exported credit, but this isn't necessarily coincident. This is, you know, four and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. That's not great solar production mode. So how are you gonna take advantage of that? Well, you, you need a battery system. And um, you have to have an eligible battery system. That's going to be the, the key takeaway here. There's a lot of battery systems on the market, but what's the one that's right for you? What's one that is right for your, your customer? So we're, we're going to look at that in, in more detail here. So what are your options now that we have talked about what NEM3 is, you know, vast reduction in, in your credits? Well, you could do the... Uh, kind of the obvious thing, you can undersize the PV. So there's no exported generation. That's less money for, for you. It's not ideal for the customer. Um, and it, you know, ultimately it's, it's not great for the planet uh, for looking at this from the greed angle. So you could add a battery. Um, this is bullet point number two. You could use a battery to capture the excess energy um, and, and then use it later on in the day during that high time of use rate and uh, that's called an arbitrage system. So it fills up the battery earlier in the day and discharges it later. Um, and that's filling up on, on solar. This is not a grid charge battery. Uh, we already had a question about this. You cannot use a grid charging battery for time of use arbitrage. The utility companies will not allow that. Um, there, there is a, a, a little bit of a workaround there, but it's a very expensive workaround. Um, so generally the answer is just no, it's, it's not gonna pencil for your project. Um, so you need a solar charging battery uh, for arbitrage. Now, kind of as we escalate into different types of battery systems, um, you can use a battery for self-consumption and arbitrage, like the second bullet point. And you can also add in a peak shaving device that will combat the demand charges and deliver more savings for the customer. That's your second, second option. Um, and then the, the second to last bullet point here is building off of this, you can you can use a battery for self-consumption, arbitrage, and peak shaving, and then size it appropriately to take advantage of unlocking new rate plans. Um, and those are either energy storage specific rate plans, which we're going to look at in detail, um, or getting to other thresholds within uh, the utility companies. And, and we'll break it down here for you in a, just a moment here. So a quick review uh, how commercial clients are billed. Um, they are charged for energy charges here in this orange box. And then they're also charged separately uh, for demand charges. So how much electricity are they being, is being used in a given instance? Um, so this is different than your residential customer. Uh, and if you add solar to a building, you're really attacking the electric generation, not so much the demand charges. So, um, you know, when we're talking about NAM and the devaluation of, of solar credits, that's, that's here. Um, and then adding batteries to bring back the ROI and the savings that customers were used to seeing under NAM2. Um, you know, so adding peak shaving, a, a peak shaving system or something that helps generate more value to that PV system is going to win back those customers and, and, and get their uh, ROIs to where they want them to be so they can sign off on these projects. Batteries can help. Um, and, you know, this, this question was very, very popular when NEM3 was, was just released. People were calling me left and right saying, how can we build your battery system to limit export? We want to limit export. We want to limit export. So we want to build 
the, the array, the size that we want, but we don't want it to export. We want all, all the excess energy to go into batteries. And that's super expensive. Um, and, and that's not necessarily the way to go. Uh, battery systems, yes, they will um, capture excess generation and limit the export. They will, but that's not your, going to be your primary goal. Your primary goal is to figure out what's the maximum ROI for that customer. You know, is it an arbitrage system? Are you going to get them on an energy storage rate plan with the utility? Or are you going to switch their rate completely um, by adding enough peak shaving batteries to get them below thresholds um, where the utility companies draw their lines? So quick review on what I've been talking about so far. With, the, with our solar leaf battery, you have two types of systems. Right out of the box, it does option number one here, energy arbitrage. So when you order our battery system, you'll get a battery that fills up in the morning and discharges later in the afternoon when the TOU rates are highest. This can be all you need for certain instances. And it's, it's my job, it's your RSM's job to help determine what's best for your customer. So send us that interval data and, and your, your site data, and we'll analyze it for you and give you some options and show you this is what an arbitrage system uh, will yield in terms of savings. Or we can look at adding peak shaving. Um, so adding, adding to our, our battery system is it's an additional piece of hardware. We use energy tool bases acumen to do peak shaving. So this is kind of like, a, like an AI computer that looks at the history of the building. It looks at weather forecasts. Um, and then it, it, it'll determine whether or not to hold charge or when to discharge the batteries. It also looks at the building in real time. So if an HVAC system kicks on, or maybe the building has a piece of a machinery or something in the building, um, it will kick on um, when those send their demand spikes. So it'll, it'll sense the spike, discharge the battery. That, therefore, the utility company within that 15 minute window doesn't see the spike and the customer won't get penalized. So uh, peak shaving system delivers more savings for the, the client, but it also is added cost. So you know, let us weigh the value of that system and help determine what's the best option for your customer. We're gonna get into more specifics, but just to kind of, you know, it's a little bit dry. So here's a quick, uh, overview of, of what, what can happen when you add uh, a system. So here's a, a winery in Northern California. We're in pg and &E. uh, On the right, you have the competitor quote. It was a 300, roughly 300 kW PV system with a 5.8 year payback, 21% IRR, and 1.3 million in savings. That was a good proposal. The customer was happy with it and ready to sign off. They wanted to get you know one last quote. Yada came in. We matched their price per watt. Um, and matched the solar array size. We added our battery system, made them eligible from a B19 to a B10 uh, tariff swap. And you can see here, the, pay, uh, the payback was much quicker at 2.1 years, uh, huge jump in IRR at almost 31%. Um, and then the savings was almost 3 million. So it over doubled the savings. And we see this over and over and over um, as we model and model uh, projects in California. So um, the value that batteries bring to the customer is absolutely incredible. It, and I'm going to show you guys how to add batteries without really exploding the capex. Like, yes, batteries, you know, can can be super beneficial for your customer, but a lot of times they're huge price points that are just not realistic. So that's kind of the beauty of our modular system is you get exactly to that threshold that they need. Uh, with the number of batteries. So you can, you don't have to overcharge the customer at all. So you can get them what they need at the lowest CapEx possible. I just wanted to reiterate that this is boring. You know, this isn't, this isn't the fun stuff. It's not really cool, but if you master this and if you're able to deliver savings like this to your customer, you're going to devastate the competition. What I'm seeing over and over is, is EPCs and installers, they don't necessarily have the software um, required. They don't have the knowledge um, required and uh, they don't have the proposal making tools. They just don't have everything that they need to give the customer their best option. So um, a lot of people, you know, and this is going to change over time as people give more webinars like this, but 
Um, right now, this is kind of the forefront of the movement. So mastering these tools that I'm about to show you uh, is going to give you just, just a huge jump above, um, uh, above the competition. So if your end customer is getting multiple quotes from multiple people, um, you know, you're, you're going to stand out as you're delivering the most bang for the buck, uh, so to speak. Let me add to the disclaimer here, everybody. <laughs> this is boring, but it's extremely <laughs> important. This is, this is the meat of the whole thing. So strap in, and, and, and Mitch is really going to get into some detail here that if you can weaponize this, you'll be uh, very dangerous. Thank you, sir. All right. So um, modeling the solar leaf, each project is completely independent. So uh, what I'm about to show you in the, in the following you know, 10 slides or so are um, kind of tips, tricks, you know, things that are going to make it easier for you to size quicker, quote more customers, and just give you kind of a, a little bit of a reference guide on, on how to do this and, and what's gonna be right for, for the customer. You know, we've done hundreds, if not thousands of models in California. Um, and so these are kind of some of the, the easy takeaways. Um, so utility companies want to add batteries to their grid. They help lower the, high crazy demands and they will help reduce brownouts and blackouts and, and things like that. So they want batteries attached to the grid. They want people discharging batteries back to the grid um, during, during the peak times. So um, all the major utility companies have developed special rate plans. Uh, in PG&E, there's the option S attached to uh, B1, B19, and B20. Uh, in, in San Diego, there's DGR. Um, in SCE and Edison's territory, option E associated with all the GS rates. Um, those are all special rate plans for, for storage. Uh, for solar, we can look at um, how you can get there easily and, and how to size your, your customers appropriately. Um, generally, those storage rate plans offer the greatest savings with the lowest capex. So, you know, if you've got a budget minded uh, customer, these are probably the first things that I would look at. Uh, trying to achieve. Uh, there is a bit of a caveat with these. They require high, high offsets. And, and we'll take a look at uh, that even more in a second. Um, and just to reiterate that our scalable modular system allows you to build the exact system size that you need. So a lot of these uh, you know, have certain percentages that you need for their annual peak demands. Um, so you know, doing quick math, you can get to, oh, I need 49 batteries. Well, you know, who are you going to call for a 49 kilowatt hour system? Well, you're going to just do 49 Yada batteries and, and be done with it. You don't have to worry about where it goes and how to wire to it. You're not pouring cement pads or trenching or any of that stuff. You're just throwing them behind the panel and being done with it and moving on to the next customer. It's easy. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the fact that remains that these rate switches dramatically quicken the payback and increase the savings for the customer. You're going to see that as we go through all these, uh, case studies here in a moment. Uh, building on this, adding um, our, our partner, Energy Toolbase's Acumen product, which is the additional hardware to add peak shaving to our arbitrage system. Um, this unlocks a whole another breadth of, of uh, a, a savings for the customer. So, um, you know, maybe you've, maybe you've sized it under one of the energy storage rate plans and it's, it's just didn't give you that oomph that's compelling enough for your customer. Well, let's go ahead and add the uh, the peak shaving system. Let's add Acumen, and I can show you how to do that, and we can talk about the costs of doing that. Um, you know, so just work closely with me or whoever your RSM is, and we can do this. Um, you will have to add this if you're trying to achieve certain things, like if you're trying to lower their demand charges, you need to add this, or if you're trying to swap from you know a GS two to a GS one rate plan, uh, you will need to do this. Sometimes those little jumps from different rate plans with threshold requirements, sometimes that's an even better option than doing one of the energy rate storage plans. Maybe your offset isn't high enough, or maybe the uh, um, maybe the percent requirement for the energy storage plan is, is too high, um, and, and you only needed you know 20 batteries or something uh, to get to a different threshold. So there's there's a lot of options. Again, each project is is unique and different, and you have to you know, I tackle these individually. 
<clears throat> um, again, you know, when you're when it comes to analyzing the the customer load, each building is specific. So, um, you know, let us do it for you. You can send us the the data. We we require the the 15 minute interval data. Maybe your PV design if you've already created, or, or we can do it your, uh, for you. Um, 12 months of bills work, but I I really say that with a huge huge disclaimer that the accuracy is is much less when you're doing it with bills versus the interval data. Interval data is king. Um, so please push to get interval data with, from your customers and explain why they need interval data because we want to build a battery system for you um, and and be very accurate with you know how how we're sizing it because it, there's a big difference between a peaky uh, load for a building and one that has giant blocks of plateaus where you know things turn on and they just stay on. Um, you're going to need a whole lot more batteries for systems like that. Um, versus just peaky loads. So um, that's why interval data is, is very crucial. Okay, I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to take a sip of beverage. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody. We're going to talk about the three main utilities uh, that have storage rate plans and how to best model in these. That's not to say that there aren't good ways in other utilities to take advantage of systems. They're just, uh, they require a little bit more attention. So these, the big three, they're our biggest uh, uh, ones in California and they've got the easiest um, and most clear cut, I, I think, ways to deliver your maximum savings. Looking at PG&E here. So for storage plans, there's B19, option S, B20, option S, and B1ST. These are all energy storage plans where you don't necessarily need peak shaving. In a, a uh, arbitrage system is all you need. Uh, and it has to be 10% of the peak annual demand. So when you get the interval data, you look at what month has the highest peak demand, then you do 10% of that. And that's how you can size your ESS. Um, there are enrollment ca caps that we're not close to those yet. Um, and then it's it's just not a one size fits all. Still, even with that, there are there are instances for like I, I say here, there's a, a B10 customer might benefit actually from going up to B19 option S if they've got a low offset. Um, so you know, this requires a little bit of thinking outside the box. Sometimes up is better than down when you're sliding up and down the uh the rate plans, um, which is kind of counterintuitive, but it's it it also. It, it, how much solar do you have attached to it? Um, and then below here, these are your threshold swaps. So for B19 to B10, you have to be under uh, 499 kW from B10 to B1 under 75 kW, and then a B20 to B19, getting it under 999 kW. Uh, for these threshold swaps, you absolutely need um, energy tool bases acumen to help deliver that real-time peak shaving because you're going to need to lower their peak demands on a monthly basis. So now we'll look at an instance in pg e We're going to look at each utility and then we're going to look at a case study within that utility. And I tried to break it up into three different case studies for three different building types and uh, in use cases. So uh, to, to keep it varied throughout Throughout this, um, is my my goal here is to help you guys understand what the tools are, how to use them, and then you know kind of take it one step further uh, for the customer and think outside the box a little bit. <clears throat> so here's a, a skyscraper in San Francisco. Uh, they're currently on B19. Uh, we were able to size 175 kW of solar uh, on their rooftop. The payback period is 3.5 years, which is pretty quick still. This is NEM3, uh, low offset. So, you know, very little, if not, you know, probably nothing being exported uh, at 70, 17% offset here. Uh, the electric bill savings, 2.7, 2.8 million over the lifetime of the system, 30 years. So what did we do here? Uh, we looked at option S. So um, we sized for option S. And you see uh, right in the middle here, 
energy tool base. This is their, their developer tool. Um, B19 regular is still the greatest saving. So our offset was too low because if you see when you switch to option S, your price per kilowatt hour increases by three cents, but your demand charges go down. Um, but adding the energy storage system lowers their demand charges anyway. So it, it actually, this became the, the preferred option financially. So um, this wasn't great. It, this was not the, the most compelling way to go. And so that's, that's why I wanted to give you guys the caveat that not always the storage rate plan is gonna be best for the customer, but you're gonna have to trial and error a little bit and, and see what works best. So this is what we went, went, went with. We went with a peak shaving system, not just arbitrage, um, and we kept them on B19. So we did not switch them to uh, option S, <clears throat> but you see the, the payback went to 3.4 years and their savings went up to you know almost 3.2 million. So um, this was a uh, quicker payback and greater savings. And again, you know these aren't sure fast models. Every building is different. Uh, I can't reiterate that enough, I guess. Um, but let's look at uh, SoCal Edison here. Your storage rate plans are the option E's. Um, so you've got GS2, GS3, TOU8, um, anything, any basically any of the time of use rate plans, and then option E, that's their storage friendly um, plan. And it can include the PV reduction, but I see a lot of people uh, especially in San Diego, going to DGR, um, where they're just assuming this rate switch when they're not meeting kind of the requirement for the annual peak demand. Um, so just make sure that your PV reduction uh, is coupled with energy storage. Uh, not You can't just get on these rate plans uh, using PV alone. Um, but I can't tell you how many proposals I see where people are just putting option E or DGR in uh, San Diego without energy storage attached. Uh, so like the above, uh, like the pg e model models we looked at, uh, this is an increased cost for the kilowatt hour, but lower demand charges. Um, so this is great for high offset customers, not great for low offset customers when you're talking about PV. Uh, tariff swaps, here are the thresholds that you'll have to get. Um, under if you're trying to do a rate swap. So if you're on GS3, you got to get it under 500, GS2 under 200, GS1 under 20. And those are required to have uh, peak shaving. Uh, here's our case study. This was a, uh, a, a large hotel in, uh, I think it was Riverside County. <laughs> They're on GS3, TOU. Uh, decent size system. Uh, again, with our microinverters can do, you know, any size systems. And, and the price for our, our microinverter is, uh, you know, just in line with string inverters. So I, I wouldn't be scared for larger systems uh, to size with our micros, just FYI. 5.8 uh, year payback, uh, 3.5 million in savings. You know, that's, that's still pretty good. And this is, again, this is modeled under an M3. Um, fairly low offset still here because it's a, a pretty big building. Um, and this was over their parking structure. Here's our Yada rate switch. So we went from a GS3 to a GS2. Uh, the rate, the payback period went down 1.2 years. So a quicker payback uh, by over a year. Uh, and then the savings went way, way up. So as you see, the value of the switch here, their kilowatt hour rate goes up, but their demand charges go way down. Um, and for this customer with large demands, you have to look at every building individually. Um, this building has huge demands that even our energy storage system being uh, 542 kilowatt hours, that was still, um, you know, not, that's, that's still not doing much for their demands. They, they have like a, a, a very, very high, high profile. So um, this delivers the, the maximum amount of savings, but this customer came back and said, uh, this is over our budget. So 
what can we do? And, and it's easy for us to do this uh, because of our modular system. You know, you can work with your customer budget, which is awesome. Um, so, you know, other than uh, other types of systems, you're, you're locked into these giant energy blocks of, you know, one megawatt hour, 250 kilowatt hours. Like th these are just giant building blocks where they cost the customer a lot of money. And it's kind of a do it or you don't scenario where it doesn't have to be that way with the, the solar leaf. It's okay. Well, what is your budget? Um, so let's work with you. So that's what this, this uh, case study demonstrates. Let's work with the budget, within the budget. So um, their budget was $500,000 for the ESS. Um, so we sized it. We're under, under their budget by, you know, almost 10 grand. Um, so they were thrilled on this. We couldn't get them to GS2 because there wasn't enough power here to, uh, to get, them, get them there. But we got them on option E, which is still uh, a, a big jump here almost as good as what GS2 delivered. So uh, their payback period was still quicker than solar only payback and their term savings uh, just skyrockets over what PV only um, brings. So um, that's just a great example of, of how you can work with your customer. All right, our last case study and then um, Few more slides after that, and then we'll open it up to the, the q and I'm sure you guys are going crazy here. <clears throat> ALU or ALTOU to GGR. San Diego is super easy. Everyone's on the same rate plan. ALTOU, great. Um, so, so let's figure it out. You got to size the ESS, 20% of, of the peak annual demand, and bada bing, you can get on DGR. That includes uh, PV as well. So you can include that in that reduction, but you have to make sure, again, like I, I said earlier, I see people trying to do this jump and they're not meeting the 20% of the peak annual demand. So I, even though it's on the proposal that you're making this rate sweat, I don't think SDG Neil is, is going to allow it. So um, adding the ESS system guarantees that you'll be able to meet this 20% of peak annual demand uh, requirement for the rate switch. Like everything else that we've seen, it's an increased cost in uh, kilowatt hours, but much lower demand charges. So if they have high offset, this is perfect for them. If they have low offset, um, don't do it. But if they have low offset, that makes the value of our batteries look incredible because sdg and &E has the highest demand charges in the whole country. Um, so when you're adding peak shaping systems, uh, it's just a no-brainer for the customer because it far outpaces the payback period of the solar. All right, here's our here's our case study, ALTOU NEM three, um, seventy four dollars per kilowatt hour, just absolutely maddening. Um, but we're in this game uh, for the right reasons, I guess, in San Diego. So, uh, one point one megawatt PV system again. You know, don't don't shy, uh, specking in our micros or a megawatt plus project and that, that's no problem for our micros um and this solar only right here uh 5.7 year payback with 12.4 million in term savings so um you know great savings here a solar only but let's see if we can do even better uh so here's our max ess size so we basically the, the customer wanted the, the maximum amount of savings. This was a pace deal. Um, and, and so we, we sized it basically just, you know, almost a one-to-one -one ratio for uh, panels to, to batteries. So 900 kilowatt hour system here um, brought the payback period to 3.9 and 23 million in terms savings. So just skyrocketed everything. Um, the client was absolutely thrilled. Uh, they've got a lot of land, so pace was pace funding was no problem here. Um, but just to show you guys, you know what what the minimum would still bring because not everybody has kind of the unlimited budget uh, that these folks had. So let's look at here. Uh, they needed at least 160 kilowatt hours of storage um, to get to that DGR rate, um, which gives them the most amount of savings. Payback still goes down and the, the term savings goes way up. So 
uh, even this scenario was still a big win for the customer. Um, not related to NEM3, but important for California. I just wanted to throw this in here, but we do satisfy the requirements for Title 24. So the storage mandate from the CEC, um, we are an easy solution for that. A lot of the new builds aren't uh, factoring in the energy storage requirement. So uh, with this overlook, um, but you still have to satisfy the requirements somehow, uh, adding our batteries to your project is super easy. That's the presentation. We've got some specification sheets here. I'm going to leave this on the screen for a moment here. You can take a picture of that uh, QR code, screenshot it, um, or you can, you know, you can obviously email me, text me, whatever, um, and I can email these to you or, or send them to you uh, however you want. But here is the Solar Leaf. It's UL certified. Um, 9540, uh, 1973 as well. And we're going to move on to the microinverter here. Um, this has the new uh, UL 1941SB rating as well. We got that well ahead of the deadline in August. Um, so we are good to go here. And uh, you can see all of the uh, the different voltage types here. So for 208, uh, three phase, obviously, uh, 240 delta, 240 delta high leg as well. And then the 480 version also does uh, uh, 480 delta. QR code, hit me up if you need this spreadsheet or spec sheet, sorry. <clears throat> How many modules for each micro there, Mitch? Oh, great question, Ryan. Uh, four you. modules per one micro. So much less hardware needed uh, when compared to our, well, our, we don't really have any competition for micros uh, yet. I, I hear rumors that someone's going to release something, but it's still um, not, not quite, not quite this. Especially in the 480 space, right? Like we're pretty much the only people who, who play you there. So. You said it. All right, in review. Ryan, is this, is this, are we back to you? I think we are back to me. I think we are back to me. I'm glad I didn't hit the mute again. Uh, just pick up right where we left off. Sure. Uh, Mitch, thank you very much. It's hard to deny the uh, the effort and the expertise that you own in this space. So uh, much appreciative. Um, we've got a number of questions. I'll let you catch your breath there for a second. Oh yeah, let me open that back up. Okay. Should I just go through these here? Nope, I'll go ahead and ask you. So okay. uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll prime you with these. I don't want you prepping on this. I want to hit you live with some of these, okay? All right. Um, we won't get to all these questions today. We're going to do our best. Um, specifically, some of the more engineering-focused ones will allow engineers to respond to. But I can assure you, if you ask a question, we will get you an answer. We will follow up with you after the event. So, uh, Mitch, you ready? Yes. Okay. Do your ROI models account for battery replacement costs at year 10, assuming that's when the warranty ends? Yes. Uh, so great question. Um, the warranty is a standard 10 years, correct. We don't do a, 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 a replacement until year 17. We use lithium iron phosphate as our battery chemistry. That's rated to at least 6,000 cycles. And those are 6,000 full discharges for a CNI battery doing peak shaving you're not doing full discharges. So we we see this lasting, you know, 20 plus years for most CNI buildings, especially if they're closed on the weekends, um, and especially if they're doing peak shaving as their primary um, function. But we uh, model a replacement at year 17, kind of a little bit more conservative, but over our 10-year our uh, warranty. How are you protecting these modular batteries from extreme heat environments? Battery manufacturer warranties are very specific. This advice. <laughs> operating temperature. Um, that is, that is a great question. Um, I, I will answer it. The we did a very in depth webinar um, on on kind of how the solely functions and how it's made, but it it does have a phase change heat exchange material built into it. So it is a uh, it, it keeps the battery cool in extreme temperatures. So. Uh, we, we've got these deployed in, in Southern California and Las Vegas, uh, stuff going in, in, in Arizona and Texas. 
Um, so there isn't an extreme environment heat wise. Um, I wouldn't put it at the North Pole. Um, that's probably a little too cold. It does have an active heater, but to keep the battery cool in, in California, we are A-OK -okay, uh, there. The, uh, the patented uh, uh, thermal management system that we have works phenomenally and uh, is probably our core IP that makes Yada possible. But great question. I, I know that's a concern for putting uh, batteries under panels on a hot rooftop, but it is thermally managed and keeps the battery cool in even the hottest temperatures. We've got tons of data that supports that, uh, including white papers. Um, Mitch, you went over the three utilities. Do you find, because you you deal with all of them directly, you're modeling yes. things for our customers. Is there one utility that plays a little bit better with us than another? No, no. It's all equal? Uh, yeah, I, I would say I, I don't like giving kind of blanket statements for that because uh, mm -hmm. uh, every building is specific. So, um, and then, you know, it, it depends on the AHJ as well. So uh, there's a lot of variables. So I don't, I don't want to answer that. Okay. Um, I'll take this one if you don't mind, Mitch. Uh, is Yada equipment listed um, on SGIP listings? Uh, we have a conditional approval on that. Um, so watch that space uh, should be happening any moment, but we do have a conditional approval class on that. But thank you for that question. That's something that we're working towards every day. Yeah, um, um, just to add on that a little bit, it was conditional on our UL listing, uh, which we have, and we've submitted, we've resubmitted the paperwork for SGIP already. Uh, we should get, you know, that approved any anytime. It was uh, really just a formality. So we're, we're, we're good there. Mitch, does this application only make sense on the West Coast? Can we use it anywhere else in the country? You can use it anywhere that there's demand charges or anywhere that doesn't like exporting. Um, I have found I, I have found that you know kind of the sweet spot is anything over 10 bucks per kilowatt um, for the demand charge. These will these will pencil. They pencil really nicely over 15 bucks, but you can make a case for it at 10. How does this work with ground mount applications? Does it work with ground mount applications? It does. Uh, we have it deployed on Iron Ridge um, ground mounts. Um, you can contact me directly and I can give you pictures on how to mount. But ground mounts are fine, flat rooftops, we're compatible with uh, for flat rooftops, we're compatible with uh, panel claw, FR10 racking, uh, Solega baskets, uh, and soon to be their, their counterpart, which is a similar product, the BX uh, basket from Iron Ridge. Uh, we're not fully approved there yet. And then, you know, we're, we're, we are approved on the Iron Ridge tilt leg system. Um, and then we're working on some more racking solutions, but uh, we've basically got everything kind of covered um, at the moment that you would need. So uh, one of our attendees says they're a little nervous about the M3's net billing because it's such a dramatic change. Um, Mitch, how confident are you about the savings that you propose in these case studies? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And this is something I talk about with, you know, we, we do a lot of in-house kind of development uh, with, with the end customers as well. And this is something that comes up with them, just, you know, how, how are we coming up with these savings numbers? Um, and well, we actually model everything at about 30 to 50% effectivity. So uh, I'm not throttling the batteries at full tilt. Um, I am leaving enough wiggle room, how I feel, you know, to, to deliver a, a conservative and, and, and number that I'm confident that we'll be able to achieve with, with that customer. Uh, energy tool base, has been very successful with the deployment of their Acumen. Their, their Acumen peak shaving hardware uh, pairs with a number of other companies' battery system, and, and they have delivered exceptional results with, with that uh, system across the board. So their, their hardware um, is doing what it intends and doing what it says, and then you know modeling with their software uh, kind of ensures uh, that what you're proposing to the customer is backed by real world uh, data there. But that's a great question. Uh, a lot of questions, Mitch. Um, this is exciting for us to see is when, when can I get these? When is, <laughs> when is this available? And the fact of the matter is, 
and that's a fluctuating answer. Um, there is a, a bit of a lead time right now, but that depends on the system size. So the best advice that I could give to you would be reach out to Mitch, Mitch at yadaenergy.com or uh, the general sales inquiry, which is sales at yadaenergy.com. Let's talk about your project and we'll talk about um, the specific lead times uh, available for your territory um, and uh, your system size. We have products available, um, but it is the demand for this with the, the advent of M3 is is pretty high. Yeah. So we're seeing uh, things move pretty quickly. That's my political answer to that is really let's we'll talk oh, offline about what we've got available. Yeah. Um, and I think we've got a number of questions. Um, got a number of questions that I think we're going to have to answer offline, Mitch. I know you'd love to get to all these, but in the interest sure. of time, we got to wrap yeah, things up. I, I promise you, if you've asked a question, we will answer it um, within the next day or so. Certainly by the end of the week, we will get to you. Cool. Uh, let me, I think there's some other slides here. Yeah, let's let's finish things up. So uh, we've got a number of different partners. If you uh, are interested in our product, uh, please reach out to us directly and we can point you in the right direction. But we've got great partnerships with uh, some distributors you may have heard, heard of. I'm sure you've heard of Green Tech. I'm sure you've heard of Kranich power store there's a number of different partners that we've got listed here um, for a full list of our partnerships or if you'd like to become a partner of ours please reach out we're happy to talk to you as we expand the business we're not just a manufacturing facility um, as mitch demonstrated today we have a a wide variety of services that we offer to our customers um, not only are we the only um, entity that plays solely in the cni space we're the only entity that specializes in the CNI space. So um, we do solar and storage analytics and we'll do proposal generation. We'll do engineering and plan sets. We'll do equipment procurement, um, installation and construction support. Some of the best things that I think we do are when we uh, drop our installation support team on site for the first round of installs. We've got uh, a 1.3 megawatt install going up in the middle of the country right now um, that we've had two or three guys out on. Um, over the course of the last month at any given any given day you can find us there assisting um, we want to make sure that you have a full experience so we've got some great on-site um, expertise that we can provide you for your for your system um, we provide project finance we can lead you in the right path i know that's been a big problem for projects in the cni space we've kind of cracked the code on that and can point you to a number of different lending partners that we've got um, ongoing maintenance these are all things that we we can handle in-house and that we specialize in Cool. So we don't just sell equipment and say, see you later. Good luck. No, no, <laughs> no. We do. We do a lot more than that, as you well know. <laughs> hey, oh, and uh, I, this is the moment that everybody's waiting for. Let me check with the experts in our marketing team. Oh, OK, we got the name. It is uh, Nathan Starnes. Nathan Starnes, congratulations. You are the Yada Swag Giveaway winner. Someone from our marketing team will be reaching out to you, to, to you directly uh, to figure out where we can mail you your prize package. Thank you. Here's my contact Thank you. info. Right, there's Mitch's contact info. Uh, as you can see, Mitch is a fantastic expert in this case. Um, we've got a number of other RSMs who work around the country um, that we could point you out to, but um, Mitch is the expert on, on NEM3 uh, in California. Yeah. Um, you can reach us on our social media platforms at Yada Energy on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And I guess we couldn't get at Yada Energy for Facebook because we are at Yada Energy ATX on Facebook. <laughs> Visit our website at yadaenergy.com. Email us at support at yadaenergy.com or sales at yadaenergy.com. And of course, our phone number, 833-MY-YADA. That's where you can reach out any sales questions you might have. And also you can reach our domestic technical support team there too. That's right. I'll say our bilingual domestic technical support team. Our tech team carries on. Um, uh, uh, we, we, we back you up through uh, all regions, all time zones, um, and uh, based right here in the good old US of A. Uh, once again, we couldn't do these without your uh, constant attendance and support. So we thank you very much for uh, stopping in. Thank you, everybody. Take care.